Hi, this is Joe Davis with GotBaseballCards.com. I'm a lifelong sports card collector and hobby veteran for over 30 years. We are very excited to offer you this channel to provide you the finest in sports card news and entertainment. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, welcome back to GotBaseballCards.com YouTube channel. And today you have a very special guest, longtime friend, longtime card dealer and friend of this industry, Mr. Jeff Smith. Hey Joe, thanks for having me. Yes, yeah, good to have you here again today. Jess, Jess uh, recorded with us, that's been probably a year, two years ago probably, so we wanted to do a refresher and uh, get your insights on uh, on the hobby as you see it today. Uh, but first, for those who uh, didn't see our other interview, um, let our viewers know, how did you get into collecting way back in the day? Well, as a lot of people, I collected a little bit as a kid, and then once I got old enough to discover cars and other things that teenage boys may, dis may discover. Uh, I left the business or the hobby for a few years. Uh, me and a few friends went down to uh, the beach when I was about my early 20s. We stopped on the way home one Sunday afternoon to buy us a Coke and a snack and uh, one of my friends bought a pack of baseball cards. I looked through the cards uh, on the four hour ride home. Uh, there were 81 Donruss. One thing led to another. I started getting back into it uh, part-time from the early 80s to like 88, 89. And then uh, 1989, I decided to give it a go full-time. And here we are 31 years later, still still doing it. Now, now I remember a uh, we met when I was in college. I still remember uh, my old partner, Jeff Porter, met you at a show. I remember him coming back to my dorm room. This is very vivid. He came to my dorm room. I didn't go to this particular show. And he's like, man, I met this really cool guy named Jess at the show. And, and, and the one thing he told me about, he said he had these really high grade cards and, and he had these really cool holders. And this was, you know, remember the old white border holders? I do. I do. Yeah. I was, I was one of the few people that used those. I just thought they, uh, they made the cards, uh, stick out, uh, my, in my eyes, they made the cards look a little bit better than they than they really were. Of course, back in those days, we uh, we didn't have a grading service, but I I really enjoyed dealing with the uh, near mint to mint collectibles, and that's what I tried to tried to stick with in my in my in my days of uh, of doing the shows. So why did why did you believe the high end was the way to go? Uh, it necessarily wasn't the high end as much as it was the high end condition. Right. Uh, it was uh, just something that I, in the way I looked at it, if I ever got out of the business, I couldn't sell the cards. I kept the cards. It was something that I wouldn't mind having in my own collection, something I would be proud of to show somebody else as opposed to a, a, a card that had rough corners, had creases. I just, I guess you could say, uh, just uh, mentally, I felt better about my collection right. dealing in, in, in those kinds of uh, cards. Right, yeah, and, and I learned that early on in the late 80s that people wanted the nice stuff. And, and I remember, um, I still remember you know, buying a, a Nolan Ryan rookie that was just gorgeous. I think I sold it to you and then we both regretted it <laughs> because we both would have wished, we wish it held on to it until PSA was grading them. Yeah, most uh, all the cards that I had back in those days, I, I wish that I still had them because I think in today's industry, we'd probably be looking at the grades of eight or better. And right. we all know what those kind of cards that are grade like that today are worth. Yeah. Now, I, I want to relate a funny story you've told me. Um, for those who are not familiar with vending cases, uh, everybody's used to seeing packs and boxes, but most people are not a lot. A lot of new collectors, especially which there's a lot of, aren't familiar with the old vending cases that Tops used to make with 24 boxes and a vending case and 500 cards. And I, you told me a story of how you used to earn free vending cases. Yeah, there was a uh, there was an, a local card shop uh, owner here in Atlanta. Uh, this is probably in the mid '80s that uh, if you sorted three uh, vending cases for him which was 12,000 cards, he would give you a case for free. So uh, that was what uh, I did a few times. I remember the first case that uh, I, I tackled. Um, I told him I would have the, the case back to him the next day in the store, not realizing that it was uh, it was about, for me anyway, it took about 20 hours to get, get, get the whole case sorted. I'd break it down into hundreds, then into tens, then into singles, and then into sets. You would normally get 16 to 18 sets per case and uh, 
Uh, like I said, I made the mistake of telling them that I'd have it back uh, to them the next day. I did, but that was pretty much on a zero hour sleep and working consecutively mm. 20 hours to, to get that case uh, sorted. And after that first case, I told them to give me a week going forward. And, and I yeah. did it. I learned the hard it. way. I did. Yeah. <clears throat> so tell me, uh, I, I know I know you're still doing shows occasionally, still doing some shows. Um, over the years, tell me one of your best uh, best finds or purchases you've made traveling around by well, those. Well, probably uh, the uh, the most valuable purchase that I made. Unfortunately, I, I today, but uh, it was probably the late '80s again. I bought a uh, 1960 Road Mickey Mantle game worn jersey. Mm. Uh, I I paid pretty strong for it. I kept it probably for a year, uh, a little bit more than double my money on the uh, on the item. But uh, if I still had the item today, it would probably be worth uh, ballpark three quarters of a million to a million dollars. Uh, obviously, I didn't pay anywhere near that. I didn't sell it for anywhere near that. But uh, uh, that's probably uh, my, uh, I don't want to say regret because, like I say, I, I did, you know, do well on the uh, on the sale of the item. But uh, it would be nice to still have that in my in my inventory today. But I actually ended up trading the jersey for thousands of dollars worth of football wax in the early '90s when football wax really started taking off and, mm -hmm. and people started uh, started buying that. So uh, looking back on it, uh, uh, I would love to still have the mixed jersey hanging in oh, my yeah. closet at the house. So, uh, how have you seen, uh, so you started really getting, collecting the early 80s, dealing by the late 80s, uh, and I know you, you uh, still help work with a lot of shop owners around the state. Uh, what do you think the biggest changes you've seen, uh, or some of the biggest changes you've seen, uh, either back to the 80s or just in the past few years? Well, the biggest life? change that I have seen actually would be two of them. It would be the... Uh, the uh, advent of uh, dealers buying and selling cards online, and then the uh, uh, professional grading services. Uh, those two uh, changes uh, really, in my opinion, has boosted the industry to where it is today. Right. So what kind of traffic are you seeing at shows you, you visit nowadays? Surprisingly enough, Joe, the, uh, the traffic is, is, is still pretty strong. Um, I think here in Atlanta, uh, there's not that many shops that are left, but a large percentage of the shops are only doing curbside service or like know, our own. Yes, or closed completely. So the um, the avenues for the buyer uh, are, are kind of limited right now uh, compared to what they were say six eight months ago. So uh, the show traffic is still pretty strong and uh, basketball has really taken off this year. You got a lot of a lot of guys coming to the shows looking for the, you know, the high dollar basketball thanks to Zion and Ja and some of those guys. Trey Young, the local guy here. So um, uh, I've been pleasantly surprised at the uh, at the business and uh, the uh, attendance at the shows since uh, we've had the uh, virus hit in the last uh, six, eight months. Mm -hmm. So looking ahead into 2021 and ahead, based upon uh, the state of the industry, you know, and based upon you know the, the the rookie crop coming in basketball, the current rookie crop in football, and and next season's baseball. I know there's a lot of demand there. What, what kind of uh, if you were instead of a weather forecaster, if you're a baseball card forecaster, what do you see for the next couple of years? How do well, you feel about it's, the it's hard for me to envision. Um, as good a rookie crops coming out in the next two years that we've had in the last two to three years. But I continue to be pleasantly surprised with the judges, the Acunas, the Guerreros, the Tatis. I mean, it seems like every year there's a couple of guys that just uh, continue to make the industry super strong. I know this year's uh, football rookie crop is super strong yeah. right now. I don't think next year's basketball crop is going to be as strong as it was this year. I really don't see how it could because 
this year obviously has been an all-time high. Yeah. So uh, uh, I still feel real good about uh, the industry. I mean, uh, from talking to guys that are that are open uh, 100% of the time, talking to guys like yourself that are doing curbside service, talking to your, my other friends and dealers that are doing the shows, I mean, uh, it seems super strong, and it's going to take a lot to uh, – to change that, I, I really believe. I, I think there's going to be some rookies that are going to come along that are going to turn some heads and uh, continue to hold the uh, industry uh, strong. Yeah. I mean, another thing I'm seeing, too, I'm just seeing so much uh, new money coming into the industry. And some of it is new in the sense maybe they collected as a kid and they're coming back. But a lot of it is first-timers coming in. And, you know, they just um, we just finished you know, the industry summit, you and I have talked about, and uh, there was talks there about how uh, uh, a lot of the high-profile collectors, they're moving away from artwork, they're moving away from coins, they're moving away from stamps, but they're really seeing baseball cards and sports cards as an asset class now. And so, you know, that's... Well, when you go back over the last 10 years and you see what a Mike Trout card has sold for, uh, when you see what some of these other uh, rookie cards are now selling for, uh, LeBron... Uh, guys like that, uh, even design cards that are a year old, it's easy for me to understand why people that have invested their money in other businesses over the year have turned to cards. Because uh, if you get lucky, if you get the right guy and the right card, you can get an unbelievable return on your investment. Right, right. Well, we've got a lot of collectors probably watching and um, always wanting advice. You know, you've been a long-time collector, long-time dealer. Uh, if you could give a couple of words of wisdom to a new collector, what would it be? Um, to a collector out there, my advice would be to continue to buy the cards, the guys that you like. Uh, you know, the Acunas of the world, the local guys here, the Freddie Freemans. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people here in Atlanta that are collecting their cards, uh, not necessarily from a... Uh, investment standpoint but because they're Braves fans they're they're just uh, collectors of certain guys uh, I think that still still allows the collector to have a lot of fun uh, shopping and looking for cards that he may not have yet and uh, who knows at the end of the day uh, five years down the road he may be pleasantly surprised also at the value that those cards so uh, having fun along the way collecting uh, the cards and then a few years down the road discovering that they're worth quite a bit more than uh, you had thought they would be has, has got to be a good feeling for a for a collector out there yeah, yeah. so well it's been great having you here in the studio today and uh, sharing some wisdom sharing a little bit of baseball card history with us and so we'll have to have you back again and uh, glad you're still part of the the greatest hobby on earth and so welcome you're welcome to come back anytime well like i said uh, thanks for having me and uh, I'm really impressed with uh, what you got going on here at the at the shop here. Uh, an unbelievable uh, amount of inventory, and uh, I wish you nothing but success in the future. Really appreciate that. Okay. All, All right. right. Thanks, man. Okay. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Until next time, this is Joe signing off for GuyBaseballCards.com.